Good morning, everyone. This is Marshall Gettler bringing you the morning comment for July 8th. My apologies for being absent for so long. I was attacked by a vicious houseplant, which scratched my eye and left me with an infection. Revenge, no doubt, for my being a vegetarian. Anyway, there's not much to say about the dollar today. Monday is often a risk-off day, perhaps because investors read worrisome articles in the weekend press and come into the office in a bad mood. The stock market was down and the dollar with it, at least against most of the other G10 currencies. The exception was the Canadian dollar. The Canadian dollar initially rallied as Canadian building permits rose more than expected in May, but it then fell as the IV index, the Canadian version of the Purchasing Managers Index, fell further into contractionary territory in June, contrary to expectations that it would rebound back above 50. The Bank of Canada's Business Outlook survey then delivered another blow to the currency when it said that, quote, many firms have yet to see signs of a notable and sustained strengthening in demand, unquote. The balance of opinion on inflation expectations also eased slightly, taking off any pressure that did exist uh, from the on the Bank of Canada to raise rates. Now, I had been cha considering changing my negative view on the Canadian dollar because of the country's uh, tr traditionally high beta to the U.S. economy. But for now, it seems that the outlook for the Canadian dollar, like most other currencies, will be decided by central bank policy. And central bank policy is likely to remain stable for some time. The Bank of Canada has kept its overnight lending rate at 1% since September of 2010 and seems in no rush to move it one way or the other. Today, we've got the U.K. industrial production for May which is estimated to have slowed to plus 0.3% month-on-month from plus 0.4% month-on-month in the previous month. Um, now, a figure like uh, what's expected should show that the UK economy continues to expand, which I think would probably be positive for the pound. In the US, the NFIB Small Business Optimism Survey for June is forecast to reach its highest level since September of 2007. Meanwhile, the Job Opening and Labor Turnover Survey, or JOLTS report, for May is expected to show somewhat fewer jobs available than in the previous month. That indicates a tightening labor market, which I think should be supportive for the dollar. For more information, including technical analysis, please read the full comment on ironfx.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or circle us on Google Plus to get more trading ideas. This is Marshall Gittler, Global Head of FX Strategy at INFX Global, wishing you solid trading.